Hello guys, Nigel here, back with you. Part 14 already of this uh, big bad buff build for beginners. Yes, got it right, again. Um, so here we are, we've got our flaps done, so they can go to one side. Engines are all done, you can see. This has taken a lot of work, a lot of sanding. Um, if you are building this kit along with me, I would recommend sanding this with a coarse sander, get it all level, and then just come in with some filler, Mr. Surface or whatever, and then get your shape back. Um, you know, I went through it gingerly, tried to sort of not use too much filler and and this that and the other but uh really you know you don't want to burn yourself out on these and you could quite easily think modeling is not the hobby for me having just done this so um there we go so they can go out of the way so there's our fin done we've got our fin we've got, I've put some primer on the areas where i've sanded and i've also done some primer around these vortex generators and on the uh, elevators so we're all good to go right let's have a look at these wings so in the instructions it's telling us to fit, do not cement the spoilers into the wings, um, which is here. We're going to ignore that because we don't need them. Spoiler can be raised or lowered. Repeat procedure for left wing. So basically these spoilers are just like plastic lumps. We'll look at those in a minute. We don't need to put them in yet. Uh, when flaps have been placed in position, cement wings halves together. Do not get cement on the flaps. Be sure wing panels are straight. So what they're telling you to do here is put these wings together like so so we'll take our lower wing here and then we take a flap and we basically pass the flap through that hole and then these outer lugs have to go underneath and then we push that up in if you remember i told you these flaps have got these lumps of plastic on the end and that helps to lock them in place okay so it kind of should stay there but it's, it would if the other wing if the top wing was on there so that one goes in like that and then we take this one and this one will just slot in like so. Okay, and then they'll stay there. They should stay there. So as you can see, when you're trying to do your seams and everything, they're going to be a complete and utter pain in the arse. So, as we say in the UK, arse, not ass. So that's my lesson in America. Something told me, uh, what is it? Uh, put the can in the plastic bag. <laughs> so you got your can, and then we say can, so we would say, put the can in the plastic bag. And you say, put the can in the plastic bag. That's proper New York. So what a new joystick. So anyway, um, let's get on with some sanding. And we've also got to deal with these um, ejector pin marks in the areas that are exposed. When we put the lower wing on, you can see you've got these areas exposed. So we're going to have to deal with them as well. And we'll do that before we put the wings together. So um, what I want to do is some more sanding. Yeah! I can hear you all screaming, yes, yes, sanding. So we're going to put some pen marks on there. I'm using pen because it's all going to be black anyway. Um, normally, I would advise against using pen because, and you've all heard it, I've said it so many times, the pen will keep coming back through your paint. So, and the reason I'm putting pen on, if you haven't seen my videos before, is so I can see where I've sanded. So I'm going to take a particularly coarse sander. This is a 100 grit although it's fairly worn, but I keep saying that. So I'm going to rest the sander on, on the leading edge of the wing and just put pressure on the back end and, sail, and sand the trailing edge away. And I'm being careful that I don't remove any of this detail and it's, it's all below the sander, so that's okay. So basically just sand away and you can see that basically this rear corner here is lower than this area here. So when you glue it together, you'd get a gap. And what we're looking at doing is sanding away until we completely remove all the pen from the back edge. Okay, this gap here is okay. That's fine. But we don't want we don't want pen to be seen on that black edge. And it's interesting to note on the D version, on the G and the H, this is not an aileron. Um, in fact, on the H you've got um, you've got uh, is it chaff or flare discharges from there? And on the um, on the earlier models, A, B, C, D, E, F. These are actually ailerons. Um, the, the later models don't have ailerons, they just use the spoilers. And also on the G, I think it's the G and the H, or is it just the H? They changed it to a wet wing, so it has fuel tanks actually in the wing rather than bags in the wing, I believe. That's what that means. So I'm sure someone will tell me if I'm wrong. No one will tell me if I'm right, but they'll tell me if I'm wrong. So um, just basically going around and sanding all the edges so we get a nice glue joint and what we can do to make sure they're square if we rest the rest the sanding stick in this area here and sand it keeps everything straight and if we get, do get any 
any of this sort of thing we'll see it we, we don't really want that because that will cause us issues we've got our assembly pins there and then coming up to here we can basically what I'm doing at the moment I'm concentrating on the leading edge not the training edge okay so there we go so we can now concentrate and you can see that what's happening as I'm sanding it's removing it from this inside edge along here but leaving it on the outer edge which means when you glue it together instead of it being like this it'll be like that if this is the leading edge of the wing here you'll end up with it like that at the back edge rather than flat so that's what we're doing we're getting it flat and if you remember when we did the um that's what I was looking for that's the number I saw before different numbers for the silver and the gray nobody ever considered the green I guess um but if you saw me do the um the tail planes and the fin we did exactly the same thing and on and then on the tail planes we really really ran on the fin we went for it and sanded the outside as well to get a nice thin trailing edge now we're not going to do that on the wings here because we've got all this surface detail that i don't want to have to replace um in fact i would I'm, I'm kind of almost tempted to just remove all this raised detail on here um and have it a completely smooth model but as it's a beginner's video i'm going to show you guys how to repair your surface detail where necessary oh and going back to that on the engines i've lost all the surface detail on the pylons i'm not going to worry about it too much i'm just going to leave what's there um and and, and that'll be that it's not really going to be seen much because it's going to be black anyway and we'll be doing all sorts of tonal changes and everything oh and i've been and got my paint i'm going to be using halford's semi matte black okay comes with an aerosol can if you're in the uk go to your local halfers brilliant stuff it works really well on plastic i'm going to be using that now we've got that hole there flashed over i'm not sure if it's supposed to be no it's not so we're basically just going to remove that flash from there it should be easy enough just break that away scrape across the bottom and it should just fall off there we go there we are that's that done so um that's the lower wing or sorry the upper wing done so that's all good okay so now we come on to the lower wing and things change a little bit we need to be careful these areas here are actually raised if you lay your stick across there you can see they're actually raised above the um above the seam line so we need to be careful when we're sanding not to remove them so you can see on here again we've got it's all, it's not flat so we're just going to sand it until it is flat again resting the stick on the leading edge but not pushing down on it and then i'm just going to go across here just to make sure we've got these outer areas here as well there we go so I can feel a dog at my feet, so you may hear some growling or something in a minute. She may have one of her toys with her. So if you hear some growling, it's not my stomach, it's her. And here's a typical example. You can see I've sanded all the way back to here, and yet that trailing edge is still not sanded. So you keep sanding until you get that in. Okay, now um, I know that the last 49 years of this video series has been talking about sanding and here we are again bloody sanding you can see here as well the oil from the mold so when people tell you you don't need to wash your parts they're wrong you do need to wash your parts if you remember i told you at the beginning of this video i haven't washed the parts on this because we're doing so much sanding and filling and and everything we're handling it so much all the oil we remove in the uh, washing process would be replaced as soon as we come handling it so and i certainly don't want to be wearing gloves all the way through the build although i probably should because my fingernails are disgusting but uh, that's another story right so there we go so again we can sand along here not that we need to worry about this edge but we may as well just clean it up I 
basically on the leading edge we just want to make sure that we've got no lumps and bumps that are going to affect us going together so we just do a dry fit to see how they go together so we've got a well there was a location pin there I've probably sanded it off oh no there it is there it is it is still there so we've got a location pin there which will go into the hole and we can pull the back together and you can see here that the trailing edges go together okay quite thick aren't they thicker than I would like I think I might take some more off the top which was I don't want to make the flaps not fit but then the flaps aren't going to be going in flush anyway I'm having this with the flaps down you can see we've got an area there it's holding away so if we look in here we can see that on the back of there it's pushing it away so what I can do there is sand this down clearance all the way around put them back together again and we can see now that's gone together a lot nicer there we've got no gap on the back edge and we've got the same issue here I don't know what's holding it away okay I can see now there's a step there I'm just going to sand down here And believe me guys I've checked all my other kits I've got three of these and they're all the same so yours will be the same so you can basically do if you're building along you can do exactly the same as me that's, that's a better fit now and there we go so didn't take too much work but we have got a thick we've got a very thick trailing edge which I'm not too keen on um, tempted to sand some more of the top wing away just put it flat down on the bench and I am pushing down now so no fact we don't want to damage the back face it's really this area here you want to get nice and thin up at the root it may, have, may well have been a bit thicker but um that's a little bit better I guess we can live with that but it should be sharper than that so let me just find a picture and I'll show you here we go I know this is an H this is the um, Boeing B52H by Danny Corman fantastic book um, but if we look here you can see that trailing edge is razor sharp um, and you can just make it out here in this picture here where they're showing the flap down you can see that that area there it's razor sharp the trailing edge you can see on the back of that what would have been the aileron is um so it needs to, it needs to be sharpened up um but we don't want to go too mad because we'll start affecting the fit especially if you're going to have your flaps up in the closed position you'll end up with a, a bit of an issue now if you remember i thinned out the trailing edge of the flaps so you also want it to match that and that is a lot thicker than the edge of the flaps so I'm going to do some more sanding on there off camera and then I'll show you what I've resulted with afterwards right so done all the sanding now got the trailing edges thin I think I am actually going to have to come in and sand this um, because it's not straight and also it looks like it's sort of doing this kind of thing the same as the elevators did so I mean, I'm going to have to come in there and do some very careful sanding and try not to remove those panel lines and if we do we'll have to replace them or just eradicate them. We will cross that bridge when we come to it as they say. Okay so I've already done one of these. These ejector pin marks are proud. They're kind of on an angle and proud so we need to get rid of them. Number 10 blade. So I keep getting these confused. This is a 10A and this is a 10. Okay I keep calling the other way around so don't call me out on it please. Um, so, I'm just going to scrape across the top of here, just remove most of that ejector pin mark there. I 
Okay, just like that. And then we can come along with a, a skinny stick and just gently go in like that and remove remove what's remaining. Okay. And the reason I'm using a skinny stick is because I can, if you look, I can do this kind of thing on the end of it. So I'm just using the very end of it. When it gets worn out, you just come along with your cutters, an old pair of cutters, just cut the end off and you're back to new again. And um, these things are great for that. Now the Photo Etch ones like this, the Infini ones, these are also very good for getting in tight spots. But the trouble is you don't have the ability to bend. You don't really want to bend those because they've, you know, you've, you've spent money on having nice tools because you don't want to be ruining them. Um, so basically we just sand that away like that. When it comes to this one here, I would suggest the best thing to do is just leave it, okay? Or if you just want to remove a raised part of it, you can, but you're not really going to get much in there to sand that down. Um, it is underneath, I would suggest just leaving it. This one here is pretty much flush, so you could just gently sand that one. I'm not pushing very hard because I don't want to end up putting loads of sanding marks in there. But um, and again, we get the same here, and now we're coming from this side, and we can go flat now because we haven't got anything behind us in the way. Now these are slightly recessed by the look of it. You can see this, these skinny sticks are perfect for getting in these little areas. And if you missed my last video, they're available from um, Flory Models, Phil Flory, or I think he's got, I think they do them in the PM store. I keep forgetting to check, but there's the Flory Models PM store. Not there's not there's a model shop called PM Models. I think they're in Poland um, or the Czech Republic. Um, oh, no, they're not Ukraine. Sorry, they're in the Ukraine. Um, it's not them. It's not that company. It's PM Models, which is Phil and Matt, Phil, uh, Phil Flory and Matt. Um, but I did mention that in the last video. So we're gonna have to put some Mr. Servicer over them because they're um, because they're shallow. So we need to fill those. As I say, this one here, you're probably best off just leave it. Um, you'll probably make more mess trying to repair that than you will. I mean, we could put a little piece of plastic card across there. We could just fill that area up. We could put a piece of plastic card over the top so it looks like it's a square raised panel, which I think I might do. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then we come across to the other one. And we got the same thing again. Now it's the top nudge. No, it's the bottom, you want the top nudge, shut up. Um, so we'll do the same thing again and just go in. Now these are all shallow by the look of it. When I say shallow, I mean sunken. Um, and there's also, we've got another one there which we didn't have on the other side. That's slightly raised there so we can scrape that away. But these are gonna need filling because they're all, yeah, they're all sunken. So we're gonna have to put a drop of Mr. Service Sort or what you can do is mix up some talcum powder with super glue. Um, I wouldn't suggest using super glue on its own because it's mega hard to sand. Uh, but yeah, you can use talcum powder or you can use some um, acrylic powder, or whatever, dental powder. Um, I'm just going to use my uh, Mr. Surfacer and wait for it to dry. Okay, so a little trick I often do. Um, if you've got an ejector pin mark that's really difficult to deal with, like here, um, rather than try and make a mess of everything, I mean, this is all sort of not really to scale anyway. I mean, there should be a hell of a lot more detail in here. Um, but if you don't want to leave what's obviously a glaring great big ejector pin mark there, the best thing to do to get rid of it is cover it up. So I've got a scrap of plastic card here. Again, it's 0.5. So I've cut this one here. I'm going to get my extra thin over. And what I've done, I've cut a couple of pieces to fit over just to cover these up. So it's basically going to look like it's kind of a boxed in panel. Okay, and it's, like I say, it's, it's not to scale and it's not accurate and it's not correct, but it's better than looking at a bloody great big ejector pin mark. I'm just going to give that a little push down. And that will sit down on top of there, lovely. Okay. And then we'll put some Mr. Surfacer on the, uh, in the ends of that. It's not quite square, is it? So I'll have to, I'll have to do a bit of trimming on there, I think. 
So, but we can put some misses surface on when it's dry. I'll trim this edge down here because I've, I've made it not square. But um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll push it up to that using the blade, and then I know that this edge needs to be dealt with. So that's glued in there, and then we've got this one here. And as you can see, this ejector pin mark is different. It's over two. It's over. Um, it's, it's covering one line, whereas the other one was covering two. So I'm just going to drop put a drop of glue in there, drop a glue in there, and then I can move it around to where I want it. Like so. Okay, and then when we do our zinc chromate and put a wash in here and everything, it'll all look like that's how it was meant to be. Whoops. There we go, that's in there now. So that's covering up that ejector pin mark. I need to push that down a bit. I've pulled it up too much. There we go, job done. So um, that's just another little tip for you. So I'm gonna wait for this Mr. Servicer to dry, then we'll sand that out. Uh, I'm not gonna subject you to, um, what I am gonna do is get rid of some writing or something there, that's weird. Let's get my skinny stick, just um, sand that away, that was weird. Um, so yeah, so just leave that like that for now. Let that go off, put some Mr. Servicer on it, and uh, then I'll be back once it's all done and sanded. Okay, so here we are now, <clears throat> still trying to get rid of these confounded bloody ejector pin marks, and they are awful. I think what I'm going to do now is give it a, a good thick coat of primer and just let just flood it and let it sort of level itself out because it just seems that whenever I, I can't get in there to sand them flat and I'm, I'm sort of pushing the Mr. Servicer into the... Uh, ejector pin marks I think. I don't want to go in with anything harder because it's going to make them even more difficult to sand. So I think what I'll do is just put a really thick coat of a good heavy coat of primer on there, let it sort of self level and then um, and then go from there. And uh, I'm not going to do that on camera because you've, you, you've all seen me airbrushing and stuff before. So I'll do that off camera and then um, I'll come back once that's on and dry. Right so here we are about 24 hours later now and um, as you can see I've given this a nice thick coat of primer and those pin marks have all but disappeared. So I'm gonna now. I've got a. This is a, a fresh, brand new, and this is a Flory Skinny Stick, uh, one of the um, the green ones. So this is a fine. Uh, there's a sort of finer and a finer but coarser side to these. So you can just go in. I'm just gonna go in here and just lightly rub over the areas where the ejector pin marks are, just to see if there is a higher low spot or anything. And um, looks a little bit of a high spot on that one. Well, I'm, I'm sort of giving up making too much fuss about this area because, you know, unless you actually turn the model over upside down, you're not going to see it. And as I say, I'm, I'm building mine flaps out. If you're building yours with the flaps up, sort of, you know, having it hanging from the ceiling in a flying uh, situation, then you're not going to worry about any of this at all because it'll all be hidden. I've also noticed there's a funny moulded edge on here, which I'm going to remove because it doesn't look very good. So we just sand that away. Let's use the coarser side. There we go. Let's just take away that funny edge on there. Because <sighs> it doesn't look very nice. Believe you guys, in a minute we will finish sanding. Because um, if you're fed up with sea sanding, imagine how I feel. <laughs> but unfortunately, as I've said a million times with these older kits, this is what it's all about. Sanding, filling, sanding, filling, and it makes it's the difference between um, a plastic kit that's been glued together and a model that's been built by a modeler. I'm not one of these that believes in we are modelers or we are assemblers. Um, you will hear that if you're new to the hobby, you will hear that as you go forward in forums, people will say, if you're struggling with that, you must just be an assembler. Um, we're all assemblers, they're all plastic kits. You know, somebody has made a, a basic shape for us to work with, or in a lot of cases, a very, very good shape to work with, and we glue it together. Um, just because you only build Tamiya, because you like the, 
the luxury of having everything fit beautifully and you know not having to worry about seams and stuff because the kit is so beautifully engineered that doesn't mean you're an assembler it just means you're a modeler who doesn't like doing sanding and filling and stuff i personally tamiya kits are fantastic but i kind of get a little bit bored of just gluing bits of plastic together i would i don't think i would rather do this but you know making a pig's ear into a into a silk purse is is better i think than um you know if all that just went blah 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 together you go bolt it on there you got job done it wouldn't be a very interesting video for you guys would it either but then i suppose just watching me sanding all day isn't very interesting either so right that's done so we're going to look at getting these wings glued together now remember i've gone over, i've gone around i've sanded all these edges i've thinned the edges out i can't thin the trailing edges out enough from the inside i'm going to have to do some work on the outside we'll cover that later so um i'm going to glue the wings together but I'm, what i'm not going to do is put the flaps in because what i've realized is as long as we don't glue these areas here we can actually get in there with a knife blade just lift these up just just give them a little these just give them a little pop up like so and then we can slide the flaps in afterwards so um i'm kind of deviating from the instructions there i've also noticed there's a bit of a mismatch so if we put this all together like this so it must be on the other wing there's a there's a bit of mismatch in here so that's something we may have to get the plastic card out for again um it must have been on this wing let's have another look oh and just one other thing guys if you remember i said about keeping your box in your instructions because you never know a kit might come up with no box exactly what happened it came up on ebay and i bought it so i've bought another one of these with no box so i've now got a box to put that kit in so i'm back to having my three unbuilt again so um yeah there we go so yeah, there's a bit of mismatch in there but um what we're going to do these wings is glue them together i'm going to do the same as before i'm going to get my um Revell contactor and the nozzles blocks so what we do is take the nozzle out turn it around and sometimes that works so I think the molten the glue dries up on the end of the tip and I think what happens is the the fresh glue inside the pot attacks the attacks the congealed glue and breaks it away but because the camera's on it's not going to work now is it it's always a bit of a problem with these so what I'm going to do is grab my pliers and a lighter and that will have cleared it make sure you do that the glue is well out of the way and there we go so i can put some of that glue along here Some along here and some along here. Yes, that noise you just heard is my stomach rumbling. It's very close to uh, lunch time, so. Okay, so that's our wing together. Just give that a little. Oops, I've got glue on there on my finger. I don't know where that came from, but put some glue on there, look. So I'm just going to grab a couple of clothes pegs, just put one on there, one on there, one up here, just to temporarily hold it all together, put another one there. And that will temporarily hold that trailing edge together. I think what we can do now is just leave that to go off. So have some mismatch here yeah I'm just gonna leave that to go off like that just for about 10 minutes so we're going to do the other one just to allow that glue to take a hold now I've already done a load of test fitting on here so don't think I'm just 
you know going at this gung-ho I have actually done lots of test fitting and sanding and and you should do the same okay So that's all held together now. So we'll leave that to go off for, for 10 minutes. And then we'll come back with our liquid glues. And uh, we also need to get some filler in there, don't we, and get that swatted. So there we are, it's all starting to come together now. And um, we've got basically nothing left to do, really. Just glue these together, fit the engines onto there, and, and we're pretty much done with assembly. And it's, some more sanding and filling, which I know you will love. <laughs> See you in a minute. Right, that's all been drying for about 10 minutes now, so we can take these clamps off and start looking at doing some um, some proper gluing. So, I've got the wing here under my arm, because it's so huge. And what I'm going to do is start with this end. I don't need a cocktail stick yet, but I will be using the cocktail stick method to um, to hold things apart. In fact, I will use it now. And basically, having that training edge glued together is helping us in holding it all together. Now we want to be careful here not to let glue run down the sides. So make sure you keep your fingers well back if you can. The other thing you can do, which is another Phil Florey thing, is hold the wing upside down and let the glue wick up. It will wick up and, and, and that will save you the risk of having the, the glue running down the sides. Now I'm going to go for this normal method so you can see what I'm doing. But if you carefully place the glue in the groove, it shouldn't run away down the sides. Okay, the only time it will run away is if you've got it all closed up and you try and put it on. So there we go. So that's closed up now. If I came in now with a brush full of glue and put it on, it would probably run away. I'm going to put a drop on the trailing edge there. Just give that a squeeze and you can see it oozing out. So we can come up here to this gap here and put some in. Put some in there. Move the stick back. Pull it together. Put some in there. Remember, you won't, look, see that one? That one's ran down. So if I don't touch that, it'll be fine. But if I touch it, I'll leave a big finger mark. But you can see there, the glue's just sat there. I'm just going to leave it and let it evaporate. And then just carry on along the wing doing exactly the same as we did on the fuselage if you remember all those all those many parts ago okay you can see that's drying out now once that's dry i'll show you there'll be relatively nothing there so i'm gonna work back And in this case, the wing is actually helping us itself because it's, you can see when I let it go, it springs apart. So it's kind of helping us to uh, get it glued together. So make sure I don't touch that area where that glue is. Give it a good push together. stick back so we can see that that is now glued up lovely and then just to make sure if you want to you can come along with it upside down and just run your run your brush along that seam and that will 
just make sure any little areas that perhaps don't have any glue in them now that there you can see there's a step these wings to be honest they're a bit of a mess they don't um particularly this one you've got this short shot here well, it's, it's a mold deformation there's some mold deformation up here i think we're going to need some filler and stuff in these in, certainly in this wing anyway um you can see that it's drying out basically i haven't touched it so there's no mark There we go, so that's all done. Be very wary of just jumping in like this and putting clamps on because what happens is you squeeze the wing together. On this end, you, you'll squeeze the wing together and actually pull the joint apart. So be very careful. If it does need to be held together, just get some tape. Just like so, just get some tape. And then you can pull it around and hold it together like that. Um, rather than using clamps and stuff because all you're doing is squeezing you're, you're, you're basically going to squeeze the middle of the wing together so and you want to try and avoid that right so put my cocktail stick in there again and then we'll work from this engine back We can see we've got glue oozing out. I'm going to hold the wing upside down, run some glue in there. We've got that step, and then just run some along that leading edge just to make sure we've got a nice hot joint. There we go. As you can see, we've got wet glue sticking out here, so I don't want to put any tape on there yet. Just want to let it go tacky. You can feel it if you want. You can see it's gone tacky, so it won't run. So just take some of your tape on the wing, pull it round, job done. And that will help to hold that together. And then moving up here. So now we're going to work between this hole and this engine number what's that number three engine isn't it it's my stomach rumbling again all those together piece of tape pull it round and then rest the end of the wing on the desk and then come along and put some glue in here same as we've done before As you can see, we've got mismatch all the way along. I think we've got some steps in here, got mismatch there. You can see the trailing edges don't match up. 
So um, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of work required to clean these wings up before we actually get them bolted on. So now here, we could just put plenty of glue in here. Get a lovely strong joint, plenty of glue, get it a lot of weld action going on. There we go, and you can see there where I've been sanding, and I've gone a bit a bit overzealous with the sanding. So, what I can do there is put a clamp on that, and then I'm going to put a clamp on this rear edge, this trailing edge, because it's trying to pull apart, as you can see. So, I'll make sure we've got plenty of glue in there, and then I'm going to use one of these little bulldog, I think you call them bulldog clips. And I'll just go in like that and hold that on there, and hold that down. And then the other thing I can do is just put some glue in here. And that will help to hold it. But make sure we don't glue that because we want that to be able to lift up to get our uh, flaps in. So there we are, that's that wing glued together. Now we're going to come around to the trailing edge. Even though we've got our Ravel contact in there, I want to make sure we've got a really good solid welded joint. I don't want any gaps. I don't want any horrible gaps on the edge like we had with that fin on the rudder. So what I can do here is once again with my bulldog clamps they don't want to stay on there. I've got some here which are larger. Where have all my clamps gone? Maybe that'll stay. That should help to hold all that together. And then this long part of the trailing edge here, we're going to get some glue on there. I'll use the uh, the Mr. Flory method. I'm sure it's not the Mr. Flory method. I'm sure it's something that he picked up. And this is what we do with our with our videos and tutorials and stuff. It's all stuff we pick up from other people and we pass it on and then. There's people out there that will pick stuff up from me and they'll pass it on and that's how it goes. And that's part of the modelling community, how it all works. I'm going to put plenty of glue in there because it looks like we've got a bit of a dry area. You can see what I'm doing is pinching there, pulling my fingers away and then rolling my fingers together to make sure any glue is He's got rid of along the edge like so. I've just knocked the fin off the fuselage. Oops, there's that glue that I put on earlier. You can see I've got some run down there, so we don't touch that. Hitting the lamp to the side. And there we go, I think you get the idea by now. Just putting the glue in and letting it wick along the joint. And then just give it a squeeze. Like I say, if we do end up with gaps like we had on that fin, or on the rudder, should I say, we can just come in with some, um, give them a squeeze and they'll go together. Come in with some sprue goo and then sand. And we're going to be sharpening this edge up anyway, which is why I'm not too worried about my gluey finger marks because we're going to be sanding this edge back. But there we go. And that is that training edge glued together almost. Still not wanting to go down there. 
let that get in there and then There we are. So that's our what's that? That's our starboard wing glued together. And if you remember, I had the glue run down the edge. Where was that? That was here. You can see it's dried out. There's just a shiny mark. Um, quick wipe over the sand and stick, and that'll disappear. So uh, there we go. So as I say, if you get if you get glue spilling anywhere, just don't touch anything. Okay. And it's often not a good idea to leave these on. For too long if you've got real hot glue going on in that area because because they will actually leave an impression in the plastic because the the, the the glue is basically turning the plastic into a mush and then when you when you come along with and put a clamp on it then you're basically not you know you're basically going to just di to squeeze the mush together and leave a big mark in it. Not that important in this one because we're going to be thinning all this out anyway. You can see we've got some horrible gaps there. Really thick trailing edge. We're going to get rid of all that, sand all that out. We're going to have to fill in these gaps with, with sprue goo and um, let all that set. So that's going to be another couple of days waiting. Got to do some filler in here and then we'll start looking getting these engines on. So this will be three and four. So look, that's number four. That one's going to sit in there like so, and then oh, number three, can't believe I picked the right ones up. There we go. So that's how they're going to sit in there, and you can see we've got a lot of work to do around these areas here, um, which is why I think what I'm going to be doing is fitting the engines to the wings before we do any painting or anything, and then we'll paint the underside of the wings sort of up to here, paint the engines and everything, and then Put it all together because you could imagine having these wings fitted to the fuselage and then trying to handle everything and smooth out this joint is going to be an absolute nightmare so i think it'd be easier to do it with just as a wing rather than as a um as a complete aircraft so uh there we go i want to get the other wing done and then uh, i'll come back and there we go that's that other wing all glued up now and everything and that's that can all dry what I'm going to do now, while the glue's drying and everything, I'm going to get some filler in this leading edge. Now, if we can see on here, we've got, this is obviously cut back here. And we can see here, we've got a step there. Now, I could just sand the upper wing, okay, to blend it in. But what we do, if we get a straight edge, we put it across there. We can see that the upper wing is actually straight. So if we sand it to blend in with the bottom wing, we'll end up with, or the lower wing, should I say, we'll end up with, um, the end of the wing being sort of curved in so we'll just get some filler in there so I'm going to make up some of my car body filler again that should be enough and then we'll just get a spot of hardener there we go as I said there's no there's no real science to this it's just it's just a case of um, get it mixed up or you've got some hardener in there it'll go off if you put too much in it'll go off a lot quicker if you don't put enough in it'll go off a lot slower that's pretty much it if it was on a car body you really want to make sure you get the sort of correct amounts because um you don't want it to start shrinking around or moving or falling out because of vibration or whatever whereas in a plastic model it doesn't really matter so i'm going to put plenty on there and sand it back rather than have to go in again so there we go, there's too much on there on purpose. And then along here, we'll do the same again. There we go. We've got some filler left, so we'll look at where else we can be using it. And I can't really see anyone. We're going to use sprugo on that trailing edge. 
I'm not sure if we have any of the same sort of problems with this wing. I don't think we do. Well, we do there. Look, we've got a, got a low spot there. There we go. That's all good. So here we are. Made up too much filler, but never mind. Eh? So let that go off, and I'm going to put some sprue goo on the trailing edge while all of this glue is still wet, and then the sprue goo will actually um, just wipe the spreader off. And the sprue goo will then work its way in. Let's get these tail planes out of the way. Tail planes for the model collector coming on with the with the lights on the tips. Um, so yeah, while the while the glue that's holding it together is still sort of wet, this will actually go in and uh, bond it a lot better. It's almost like the, the original glue is almost like a primer for it. And I'm only going to put it on the edge. The sides and stuff we can use fillers or whatever. I've just put my fingers in the filler that I put on the front, so I've probably ruined that. This is what happens when you try and do too much at once. And then we'll just run some sprue glue along here. Just to fill in these little micro gaps we've got. The worst thing is when you sand it, you don't want to be sanding away and all of a sudden finding you've got nothing there because you've sanded into a gap. So you can imagine it'd be like putting a H, a capital letter H on its side and then sanding the top and the bottom away and ended up with nothing in the middle. So that's what we want, want to try and avoid. Okay, so I wonder if I can repair that filler, if this filler is still... Let's start to go off. I may be able to get it in there. Yeah, I've pulled it away now. Stupid me. That's what happens when you try and do too much at once. I.e. rushing. So that's that there. So we'll get some sprue goo down this trailing edge on this one. Take these clamps off. I'm not really sure we need any long here, but then we'll put some anyway. Definitely need some here. You can see there's a gap there. We can also see we've got a massive, great thick trailing edge, which is ugly. Something I really hate. See our model aircraft is great big thick trailing edges. They look awful, particularly on the 70 second scale stuff like this. You know, 30 second or something, you'd get away with a trailing edge like this. But um, really, they should be very, very sharp. If you've ever seen the wings on an F-104 Starfighter, I, remember, I can't remember where the museum was. I remember seeing one in the museum. It's, it's actually got plastic strips on the wings because the edges of them are so sharp. There we go. This stringing here, just leave it, don't touch it, just leave it and then afterwards it'll just pull off. If you start to touch it now you're likely to um, mark the surface. We'll put some here. There we go, that's that all done. So we've got to wait now for, I don't know, I'm going to leave it a couple of days before I do any more sanding on that. And then we'll look at getting the um, the engines on, I think. So um, thanks for watching, guys. Um, we're going to call that a day here because, as I said, I'm just going to have to sit and wait for everything to dry. So uh, we haven't really covered a lot in this video, but we have, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Happy modelling. And uh, I'll see you all very soon for part 15. Um, I think what we might do in the interim is while this is going off, we might get on with the uh, dealing with the seam on the fuselage. 
and uh, we're really getting there now we're going to be into some um, serious painting soon so thanks for watching see you all soon bye for now